In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create consistent characters, pose them, automatically integrate them into AI generated backgrounds and even control their emotions with simple prompts. This workflow works with Stable Diffusion 1.5 and SDXL, so any style is possible. And you can use it to create children's books, AI movies, or one of these AI influencers that apparently will make you thousands of dollars a month. One of the main tricks of this workflow is to generate multiple views of the character in the same image. And to be able to do that, I created this pose sheet, which you can download for free on my Patreon. It depicts a character's bones from different angles in the open pose format. And using ControlNet, we can generate characters based on these bones. If you want to use it in Automatic 11.11, make sure to set the preprocessor to none when using it with the open pose ControlNet. But I will use it with my custom workflow in ComfyUI and I prepared a free step-by-step -step guide on how to install it and set up my workflows. It shows you where to get all the models that are used and where to put them in your ComfyUI folder structure. But now let's create one of these AI influences. So I open ComfyUI and I drag and drop my workflow into the interface. It consists of five parts, but the first two are the most important ones as they will generate the sheet itself. Before we start, we need to import the pose sheet here and choose a model down here. And I'm using the Wildcard XL Turbo model just for faster generation, but you can use any model here. Just make sure that you match the K sampler settings to the recommended ones of the model. And if you want to use an SD 1.5 model, make sure to switch out the control net to an open pose control net that actually works with SD 1.5. So now we can put in our prompt. Of course, we could do like the typical influencer model, beautiful woman. Let's click generate and see what it will create. As you can see, it works really well, but that's just too easy, right? I need to find my own niche. And I think it's cheese. Let's create an influencer for cheese, a cheese fluencer. And let's just create a friendly German dude living in the Alps, breathing the fresh air, living among the cows. So again, I keep this part of the prompt and then add my character after that. So let's try it out. Click Q prompt. And after a few seconds, you can see this preview here. And this looks a bit creepy and weird, but we will fix that. I feel like he needs a mustache. Oh yeah, that works really well. I'm really happy that it's this type of mustache. If you're having some bad luck with your characters generating in weird poses or looking inconsistent, just stop the generation process by clicking view queue and cancel. And then try to add more descriptive prompts and play around with the seed in your sampler until you find something that you like. So when you're happy with this preview result, all you need to do is click Q prompt and all the steps after that will run automatically. So the first step after generating this preview image is to upscale it from 1K to 2K. And you can see how much this already improved quality, but the faces, especially the small ones, still look kind of broken. So next I use the face detailer and this will automatically detect all the faces in your image and re-diffuse them. And you can see just how amazingly consistent the faces look now. In the next part, you have the option to save all these different poses as separate images. So basically this just cuts out these poses and then they will just be saved out. In the next step, you can generate some expressions for that character. And for that, I'm again using the face detailer and they look pretty bad. Face detailer always goes for realism unless you specify otherwise. So the trick here is to also add Pixar character as a prompt in this box down here. In these settings for the face detailers, make sure to match the steps CFG, sampler and scheduler to match the model that you're using. I'm using wildcard, so this works pretty well. Finally, the denoise strength will determine how strong the new generated expression will be. I found 45% is a pretty good, though kind of strong starting value. If your character ends up looking too different, you can reduce that value or also add elements that change to the prompt down here. So for example, for my character, the mustache type changed. So I also added handlebar mustache down here. You can see that the faces now look much better and much closer to being a Pixar character. Finally, this last part just adds all the different expressions together and upscales them and also upscales the single image of the face. If you don't need certain parts of this workflow, you can just deactivate them by 
pressing Ctrl B. And here's our full character sheet for Hans Schmankerl, cheese fluencer and presenter of the world's finest cheeses. Now we only have to put him in some nice locations and give him some cheese to present to his audience. But before I show you how to do that, let me show you what else you can do with this character sheet and this workflow. You could, for example, train your own Laura for this character based on all the images we just created. And to help you with that, I added this save image node after the first face detailer here. When you activate it and click Q prompt again, it will save out all the different images of your character's faces. You could also take these images to Midjourney and use their new character reference tool to put this character into different locations. Just upload all these images here and use a short prompt describing the action that you want to see in your scene and then put in the CREF parameter after that. After that, you just copy the links to your uploaded images and add the CW parameter set to 100 so that your whole character's appearance is taken into account. But as always with Midjourney, it's really hard to get specific poses and you might need to rerun a prompt a few times to get exactly what you want. So now let me show you my free workflow for how we can pose these characters and put them into different locations. Let's open up my controllable character workflow. It consists of three steps. First, we pose our character and generate a fitting background. Then we integrate the character into this background and finally we can change the expression, fix the face if it changed too much and upscale the image. At the start here I choose the same model that I used to generate the character and make sure that all the settings in the K sampler match the recommended settings for that model. I copy over the original prompt we used to generate the character, but it's really important to cut out the multiple views and instead paste that into our negative prompt. Otherwise, we would get really weird images like this one. Next, we need to load in the correct images for our IP adapters. An IP adapter basically takes the likeness of a character and transfers it into a sort of prompt. That way, all our generated characters will resemble the original one very closely. Into the first one, you put the image of your character's face. And into the second one, we put the medium close-up or the full body pose depending on what pose you are generating. But generally the medium close up in the second one works really well for all types of poses. Speaking of poses, we need to create some. And my favorite method to do that is to use openposeai.com. He can move this skeleton into the exact pose you want. You can even move the individual fingers. Make sure to set the scene height and width to match the aspect ratio of you, the image that you want to generate. Also play around with the focal length and the proportions of your character so they match the generated one. When you're happy with your shot's composition, simply click the play button down here next to the preview and click on the first and second image. This will download the open pose bones and the hands as a depth map. Now you can drag and drop them into the correct control net inputs. First the pose and the second one is the depth map. If you want your character to follow this pose really closely, leave the strength at one, otherwise you can reduce it to give your character a bit more freedom. When you're happy with your image, you can generate a fitting background. And I'm generating this cheesy flower field in the Alps. Let's move on to the next step. Here we composite the character onto the generated background. And I know this stuff here looks complicated, but most of it is happening automatically. We only need to focus on this part up here. First, choose a model for removing the background. For stylized characters, anime illustrations works really well, but general purpose is also really good. Next, the image is added onto the background, but it looks pretty ugly. We have these ugly seams here. So now we have three ways to fix this. If you want to keep the character and background exactly the same and only fix these seams, Connect this second mask into the latent noise mask. This one is automatically created around the edges of your character, so only these parts get denoised in the next sampler. Now this fixed it, but we still have the issue of different focal planes and also the light is not really matching. So to fix it we can connect the first mask to the latent noise mask. This will denoise the full background. Depending on how high we set the denoising in our sampler, this will generate a new background that better matches our character. We can also come back to the background group and activate this blur node to help with the different focal planes and to create a more cinematic look. Finally, you could use the crop node to move around your background and I did this in this wide shot for example so the character is not like a, a giant. Finally we could also completely deactivate this latent noise node. This will completely denoise the image changing not only the background to match the character but also the other way around. 
Notice how denoising the background again helps with integrating this character. It even generated new shadows. If you now want to change the pose, it's as simple as creating a new one in the Open Pose Editor, changing out the images in the control net and clicking Q Prompt. But now let's finally give Hans some cheese. I just add holding pieces of cheese into the positive prompt and reduce the weight of the control nets a little bit to give Hans a little bit more freedom of how he exactly wants to hold these pieces of cheese. And there we have him presenting the cheese in the pose that we created. But we can also let Stable Diffusion create some poses for us instead of creating them manually. For that I just deactivate the control nets and generate an image. Now we don't have control but the poses generally look pretty good. You can also activate auto queue and set the seed in your samplers to random. And this way I can automatically generate hundreds of images of our character in different poses and locations. I hope you'll play around with this workflow as there are endless possibilities to improve it and make it your own. If you want access to exclusive example files and additional resources for this workflow and also access to our Discord community, consider supporting me on Patreon. Making these videos takes a lot of time, so thank you to my lovely Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Oh, and if you're in the big cheese industry and want to book Hans Schmankel to present your newest creations, feel free to reach out to me. 